Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Friday. Glad it's Friday. Glad we made it. It's been a great week of shows. We're going to end on a strong and interesting note. Bishop Nathaniel from Israel United in Christ is going to come back and join us again. He was on the show, I believe, seven months ago. Uh, they've done some impressive things in Chicago that I wanted to follow up with him about. I'm sure it will be a spirited, fiery conversation. Uh, I want to take care of uh, our favorite sponsor before we get to Bishop Nathaniel, because I don't know where that conversation will go. Bishop Nathaniel gets to talking, and you, you just never know where the conversation is going to go, and we can get in some kind of heated argument. You just never know. So uh, let me take care of our great friends at Preborn first. You guys know about our commitment, not just my, our commitment as fearless soldiers, as a fearless army, to Preborn. Preborn is an organization that takes care of expectant mothers who are considering abortion. They provide ultrasounds. They show the woman reveal the baby's heartbeat, show an image of the baby in the womb. Most times when the woman hears that heartbeat, it leads her to choose life. She knows that she has a human being growing inside of her. For just $28, Preborn pays for an ultrasound. We pay for an ultrasound by donating to Preborn. You can get five, you can pay for five ultrasounds for just $140. But it's just not the ultrasound. Preborn then comes in when the woman chooses life and they help mentor, provide material goods and the assets the woman needs for the first two years of that baby's life. You guys, I brought on Dan Steiner, the founder of the show, to, to assure myself and you all that the money we give actually goes to help expected mothers. It pays for ultrasounds. It does not pay for a bunch of overpaid executives. Preborn is awesome. Preborn is great. It's part of our life purpose. It's part about training our minds to understand that life begins in the womb, and then that helps our perspective on how to treat life outside of the womb. If you want to give, all you have to do is hit pound 250, say the keyword baby. Pound 250, say the keyword baby. Or you can give the Jason Whitlock way by going to preborn.com slash Jason. As promised, we're rejoined once again by Bishop Nathaniel from Israel United in Christ. You guys remember we had Bishop Nathaniel on probably seven months ago when we were trying to understand the Hebrew Israelite movement and Bishop Nathaniel and his group at that time had come out in massive support of Kyrie Irving when he returned to the NBA after being suspended by uh, the Brooklyn Nets, uh, Bishop Nathaniel and his, his men surrounded the Barclays Center in one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. And we had Bishop Nathaniel on then, and he's outdone himself again, or he and his organization have. Uh, they went to Chicago, O Block in Chicago, one of the most infamous and notorious places in all of Chicago, one of the most dangerous places, and did some outreach and basically a takeover of O Block in Chicago. I saw some of the video footage, I saw some of the pictures, and I was like, oh man, this is what I'm talking about. This is men standing up and uh, standing up for their religious beliefs, standing up for their belief in men, standing up for a community that is in distress and needs strong men. And so I had no choice but to reach back out to Bishop Nathaniel and the guys from uh, Israel United in Christ, tip my hat to them, but also want to get a better understanding of what it is they're doing in Chicago and the significance of, of what they did in Chicago and how that may play out in other cities. Uh, so Bishop Nathaniel, welcome back to the show. Uh, Thank you. If, if, there's one, if there's one thing I can say, uh, you and your organization certainly are fearless. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for having me back. And I do want to say, I, um, <clears throat> I didn't forget you brought those guys on after me to try to undo what I, what I was teaching on your show 
those, those three guys that didn't know the scriptures at all. But it's all right, Jason. I appreciate you. And I thank you. <laughs> well, we can talk about that as well. Uh, and, and listen, those three guys, I'm not going to let you bad mouth them. Uh, Daniel Mayer, uh, <laughs> Robert Mathis Jr., Pastor Charles oh, Dow. They have a they have a difference of opinion uh, with yes. you, but I have uh, respect for any man that is trying to inspire other men to live a more godly life, a more masculine life, and to stand up in this culture. So, but before we get to them, and I'll let you respond to that before we get to them. I, I, I would love for you to explain to me what you all uh, did in Chicago and are doing in Chicago. We're doing a great work in Chicago. We have a school in Chicago and I definitely want to say that our allegiance must first and foremost be to God and race. I know many people may take offense with that, but our allegiance, I'm going to say it again, must be to God and race. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to Mr. our Daniel, let, let me let me let me let me ask you to unpack that. Why would you put race on the same level as God? Ah, oh, let me show you. Um, give me Matthew 22. So, you know, I, I, I'm a Bible man. I love the scriptures. I have to reference what I'm saying in the script. There's something Christ, the black Messiah, said in Matthew 22, verse, read verse 36 down quickly, please. Book of Matthew, chapter 22, and verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, as thyself. You see that part right there, love thy neighbor as thyself. Most people, Jason, don't understand what that means in Leviticus chapter 19. Most people don't understand that. And so when they say neighbor, we've been, I've been brought up to believe my neighbor is anybody that lives next door to me. But that's not what the Bible is saying. Watch what God explains neighbor right here, Leviticus 19, 17. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19, 17. 17 or 19, 18? 19. Let me hear 17 first. Verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Ah, that's what I wanted to get to. So your neighbor is your brother is the children of thy people. That's what the Christian church has omitted from us all to this day. Most black, when we were at OCAB, not OCAB, excuse me, when we were in Chicago at the old block, most of our people, Jason, believe that the neighbor is anybody white, Chinese, Arab, Pakistani, well, what? but they never say their own people. What about their own people? Uh, and you get a big pause because they've never been taught to love themselves. This is the problem, not just in Chicago, Jason. Jamaica is even worse than Chicago, okay? There are parts of L.A. as bad as O'Block, okay, named after. What's his name? The brother's name, O.D. Perry, who was killed by a, a female gang assassin. Pop! She shot him dead, then somebody came and pop! Shot her dead, okay? This is a, a vicious cycle in amongst our people. And Jason, I got to say this. I got to, these grimy, greasy preachers out there, okay, who made an agreement, a covenant with Roman Catholicism, like the Pope, okay, things of that nature. They sat down and made an agreement not to teach our people correctly, okay? So when we think of love your neighbor, I say, oh, I love that white man. I love that Arab man. I love that Chinese man. Whoa, he my boy right there. What about that black man? Oh, he's just in. He's a oh, No, 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 I'm going to shoot him. Shoot him. That's, that's what they do. Where if we have been taught and instructed properly in the biblical text, we'd be much better off, Jason. So this is why I said our allegiance must be first to God and race. Because as a people, Jason, we suffer political oppression. 
economic oppression, and social degradation. You know it. I know it. The world knows it. Okay. So we've come to do a. How great do you work. get? How do you get from the word neighbor to race? Oh, the children of thy people. That's how you get to race. The children of thy people means your brothers, your sisters. That ain't the people that enslaved you, Jason. That's the people that were enslaved with you. That's your brother. Hold That's for one second. Hold for one second. Hold for one second, sir. though. You do know, like, in Africa, Africans enslaved other Africans. Oh, well, that, let's talk you about... You know, white folks didn't just show up and, and run off into the woods and bring the... You know, other black people, other Africans had enslaved them. Uh, in, in, I'll say this. Indentured servitude is different than chattel slavery. And I got a book for you, Jason. Written in 1714. Watch this. I just would because I know most people, they, they've never researched the old white eyes only books. You know why I say white eyes only books, Jason? Because when these books were written, they did not allow us to read or to write, the majority of us. Put it on the screen. Here's the book. Let me see the top of the book. Atlas Geographic System of Geography, raise it up for Africa, volume four, raise it up, raise it up so we can see when it was printed, 1714. Now let's go inside the book, please. That top paragraph, highlight it, bring it up, shrink it down so we can get, come on y'all, cutting it off, move it over. Bring it over so we can see it. We'll take your word for it. Go ahead, read it. it yeah, read that, read that. Leo says there are other kingdoms on the southern frontiers of this country, which are inhabited by a rich, industrious, and just sort of people. Judaism was the religion of the ancient Africans for a long time. I bet you never heard that in church. You never heard that in Sunday school. Let's read on. Judaism was the religion of the ancient Africans for a long time and succeeded by Christianity. But Mohammedism prevailed in the 208th year of the Hegre when all the Jews, Christians, and professors of the African religion that could be found were put to death. Uh, it says just in a uh, process of time, there is old, their intestine quarrels made them neglect Muhammad's law and revolt from the Caliph and Baghdad, for which they were severely punished by the Mohammedan Caliphs, who caused all their books to be burned. So they burned our books, Jason, on suspicion that the knowledge of the arts and science prompted them to contemn uh, Muhammad's law, Muhammad's law. So thank you. So with that being said or read, Jason, guess who our, when we were at Oblak, guess who came against us first and foremost? It was the Muslims. It was the Sunni Muslims. Many of the gang leaders, uh, not all of them, but some of them, I'll say some of them, said that they were Sunni Muslim. They said, that's our religion. But the problem has still spiraled out of control, Jason. Regardless that you have become Sunni Muslim, there is no change. Like Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23 says, our people need to change in their minds, in their souls, in their hearts. Can you read that for me? Book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The Bible says be renewed in the spirit of your mind, Jason. That's the problem. No matter how rich our people are, no matter how middle class our people might be, and no matter how poor our people are, the mind must change as Israelites according to the Bible. Because we are the Israelites according to the Holy Bible. We're not African American. We're not Jamaican. We're not whatever label they put on us in slavery. We are not those things, Jason. Now let me talk, let me go back to them greasy, greasy preachers. Christ said this, <laughs> Jason, you talk about racial idolatry. You love that. Matthew 24, verse 4 and 5. Read that for me and show me that. Hold These for one second. Let me get there with you. 
Hold for one. Matthew 24. Verse what? Four and, verse 4 and 5. Got you. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That was the uh, Jesuit priests, their missionaries, their popes, their Catholics, their Protestants. They all came. The Dutch came. The Spanish came. The Portuguese came. The English came. And America came, saying that they are Christ. And guess what, Jason? We've all been deceived by them. All of us, every last one of us have been deceived. What you got to say about that, Jason? Well, I certainly do think deception is part of Satan's game plan, and it's really his own game, only game plan. Uh, but I, I think I, I'm not your understanding of this sort of deception that America came to deceive and but that's a pretty broad statement that it's it's hard for me to react to. I get your understanding and your belief that black people are the original Jewish people. I get that that's your belief. Uh, and, and I don't have a problem with wherever the conversation goes, but I do just want to establish for the audience what the reason I'm bringing you on here that I, I want you to just and and I sidetrack the conversation by asking you a follow up. But yes. you guys went out in great force, in great numbers, and took over a community that's been racked by violence, uh, a lot of death and destruction, and and I, I just I don't care what you all believe. I respect the actions that you took. I I can't help but respect that as a man. You're showing up, trying to improve a community, trying to make it safe for kids and women. Hats off to you. I don't know why, although I, I guess I do know why, the, the racial aspect is such a big part of your message, but, but I, I do understand that a lot of black religious people in America use race as a hook and that racial idolatry is is a great hook that that has nothing to do I, i'm not here to argue with you today about who the real jews are or israelites are i'm not qualified to have that debate with you uh i, I I'm, I'm not quite but the racial idolatry aspect i think is is uh a weakness that you all have, but it, it, it attracts people and it'll attract a crowd and many black ministers of different faiths use race as a hook to draw an audience. That's a flaw in their messaging, but a strength in, in you all's messaging that again, I just repeat myself, is you all get men involved in a real way and you get them standing on masculine values and a proper role of leadership in their community, and and so I, I did. How many days? Let's start here, and then you can go wherever you want to go. Respond to anything that that I say. But how many days were you in Chicago? What were you hoping to accomplish uh, by this show of force and 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 you know just showing up in O Block? And what's been the impact? And and continue to talk about what the response to you guys showing up on O Block has been. Well, you said a lot there, Jason. Okay. I did. Um, um, we, as I said, we have a school in Chicago. We have a school where we invite men and women to come learn the truth of who they are according to the Bible, which has been hidden from them. Um, the truth of what the Bible says is not my personal belief. Everything I say can be substantiated in the biblical text. So we went to O Block. Uh, with a show of force to let the drug dealers and gang leaders know there's a better way. Fear and intimidation doesn't, does not work on the Israelites. You could kill me today. There's going to be 144,000 rise up in my place. You can kill the next man and the next man. Okay. These things have happened. Christ said in the book of James, faith without works is dead. 
But what good is it if you have the greatest weapon, which is the Holy Bible, the greatest instrument, and you don't use it properly to resurrect your dead people? Because none of us, Jason, no matter how rich we become, I'm talking about you in particular in this instant, no matter how rich our people become in society, you can never rise above the masses of your people. Never. All races will always see you as that a part of that race your race that goes for oprah that goes for uh tyler perry that goes for all of you ice cube so, all of you can rise above that let, let me let me let me let me let me interject here let me interject here yes sir let me interject here as as a israelite united in christ as someone who believes you're a, a, a real jew as a christian I said, I don't care what you, my next door neighbor, any of the guys here in my studio working with me, I don't care how they define me. I care how God defines me and how God sees me. The things you're talking about are irrelevant to me. And, and so it's just not a effective hook for me. I'm not worried about what the white man, the Latino man, or even the black man thinks about me. I'm worried about what God thinks about me, and am I in any way trying to represent him and his ways? That's what I think about. And so doing anything in reaction to, oh, well, white people are always going to see you this way. The white man's not my God, so I don't care. But if as a Christian, the white man is a Christian's God. Give me Amos 3 and 1. Let me show you this, Jason. Let me show you this. You said you don't care what nobody thinks about you, which is valid. Because we could get called Negro or all day. Nobody cares. In Amos 3 and 1, watch what the Lord says. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the Lord says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. In Christianity, like when we were at Old Block also, everybody said God deals with everybody. But that's not biblical. As a Christian, we have been lied to consistently. God deals with everybody. But God says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, and therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. This is what slavery was all about. Colonialism, apartheid, segregation. That's what it's always been about. The sins of the children of Israel, who we are. And this is why we suffer. And no pastor, no preacher, no imam has taught our people why we as a people have suffered, Jason, why we went into slavery, and what we must do to be delivered from oppression from slavery. No pastor, no imam has come out taught us the solutions. Only the word of God. We must keep the commandments, Jason, as Israelites. That's the solution. Okay? So now. I, I certainly think obedience to God is the solution. Uh, I, I don't think we're the only group of people that suffered uh, the destruction of slavery. That, that, mm. that slavery has impacted all people who have like who? been inhabited. The ancestors, of, uh, the ancestors of everybody at some point were enslaved. Like who? It, 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 men have been imposing their will on other men from the beginning of time. Like who? You name the group. Italians who, you name the group and they, their ancestors have been enslaved. Oh, you said Italians. I'm kidding. The Italians were the ancient Romans that assassinated Christ, that destroyed the nation of Israel in 70 AD. Were they enslaved? Nope. No, they were not enslaved. Uh, who else, Jason? Give me another name. Who else? <laughs> it's, you're, you're saying no Romans were ever enslaved. As a nation, as a race, as a people. No, only us. Only us. 
Hold, hold for one second. Scripture. You said Let me explain. you said Let me explain. no. Are you saying no Roman? Now you're saying as a people, only right. us. There were free black people in America and free black people all over the globe. Mm -hmm. And what and happened? Everybody wasn't enslaved. Not er that goes for America. There were black people in America who owned slaves. Okay, let's talk about that for a second, Jason. The free blacks that we hear from the time of the 13th colony, what eventually happened to them? Their lands were taken and they were, many of them were lynched, burned alive, okay? Now, when I talk about slavery biblically, not just talking about slave ships, the yokes of iron on your neck, I'm talking about loss of identity. That's a big one. Loss of heritage and culture. All those things wrapped in one, Jason, only fits us. Like when you read the book of Daniel, you ever read the book of Daniel, Jason? I believe it's chapter nine. And it's around verse 24, somewhere around there. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Give me a second. I'll be right there with you. Uh, you say Daniel chapter nine. nine. Book of Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 12. And he had confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done, as hath been done upon Jerusalem. So you can't compare what any other nation went through compared to what our race went through, Jason. There's no comparison, okay? People try to one us up and go, oh, no. Six million. Gotcha there. No, 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 no. That's we talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of million with us. That's six million. Yeah, it happened. Here, I'll cry me a river. Okay. But what the Bible's talking about, you can't compare what happened to the 12 tribes of Israel to any nation on the planet Earth, Jason. And these, if you see the pictures you're looking at, Jason, those are our children. Those are our sons and daughters. Okay. Those are kids from teenagers below, lost their identity, language, heritage, culture, freedom. Bishop Nathaniel. Yes, sir. Bishop Nathaniel. Yes, sir, Jason. I'm not, yes. I don't think there's upside, one, because I'm not trying to build a church and a congregation. Right. So me, Jason Whitlock, personally, doesn't see the upside in the victim Olympics. <laughs> I, I, I'm not here to, you know, argue, hey, I, I suffered more than everyone else. I get your argument. You're trying to make the point that, hey, we're the original Jews. If you yes, follow sir. the scripture and look at what happened to us, it tells you that we're the Jews. I get that. But how it sounds like, to some degree, to people that, you know, perhaps aren't as versed and following along in your conversation is like, hey, man, we face more oppression than everybody else. And Therefore, we're old X, Y, and Z, or therefore, feel sorry for us, or therefore. Now, again, I know you're unpacking it as like, hey, I want you to understand who you really are. I, I get that's your message. But yes. it, it comes across like, hey, uh, you know, if everybody understood how oppressed they were, they'd all agree with me and they'd all believe X, Y, and Z. And, and so for me, what I think is most effective is if we all took our identity in Christ, all tried to adopt biblical values and a biblical worldview, I don't have to agree with you to see what y'all did at O'Block, like, man, that's manly and that's godly. And, I, and I respect that. that. I do want to get and, back. And, and I respect that. I, I don't have to agree. And it's like you're coming at me and others is like, if we don't believe everything you believe, we're idiots and we're unworthy. And, 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 wouldn't and, use and, those and, words, Excuse me? I wouldn't use those words. Well, and, and even if that was the gist of, you know, you believe so passionately and sincerely in your point of view that, that you know, you consider me and everybody else that doesn't agree with you as lost. And, and maybe we well, are. And I could sit over here and I think, I, and I could sit here and think, you're lost, but I tend to like to look for the good in everything. 
And, and to much degree, particularly as it relates to racial idolatry, I do think you're lost, but I see some amazing things that I want to support, yes. honor you all uh, for doing, re and, and respect you all for doing, because you know we're all flawed, we, and, and we'll let the truth over time uh, prove which of us is right as it relates to the racial idolatry issue, but you know, yes. You know what, Jason? I, you're right. I'll, I'll, I'm a, I'm yeah. a, to see to what you said right there, because what we did is very important for the world. And when I say the world, I mean our people scattered worldwide. Um, being lost, like remember what Christ said in Matthew 15:24, Jason. I want you to get it for me, so you know I'm not making this up. Yes, okay. I'm lost. You're lost. This is what Christ I love said. when you go to the New Testament. You'd like yes. to spend a lot of time in the Old Testament, but I like it when you go to the New Testament. What did you say? Matthew 24 what? Matthew 15, verse 24. Oh, Matthew 15. My bad. Matthew, uh, uh, let me go back here. Matthew 15, verse 24. Yes. Read that for us. Matthew go ahead. I'm there. I'm ready. 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So I am lost. Christ came for me. Lord, why did he call us the lost sheep of the house of Israel? We lost our heritage, culture, language, the laws of God. We lost everything, Jason. So this is why, yes, when you say I'm lost, yes, I am lost. And I'm finding my way through the Bible now as an Israelite. So now back to, back to old block, Jason. Let's get back there. First John 3.15. I'm going to get to 1 John. Get there, Jason. 1 John 3.15. Watch this. O Block, Chicago, we love you. Oh, Jason, shout out to uh, Tiffany Carter, the mother of Rashim Carter, okay? Uh, because her, her family has gone through hell with what occurred with her son, okay? Um, and they have not found the devils that did that to her son, but God willing, they will be found and judged. So 1 John 3.15, read that for us. Well, John. Hold on. What, you, what, what, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, 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 is that a picture of Ben Crump you got on my show? Oh, you don't like that? Wasn't I, that Ben Crump? Ben Crump really Ben is. Crump's an ambulance chaser, and you know he's an ambulance chaser. He ain't got nothing to do with God. The man's out chasing money. You, you know that's what he's about. The dude can barely speak English, and he's <laughs> pretending to be a lawyer uh, and out chasing money. He's one of the greatest hustles and scams I've ever seen in my life. Bloody. Stop but, it. That, that's a bad look for you and the Israelites to even be associated with that clown. The shout out was to Tiffany Carter because we did support Tiffany Carter uh, regarding her son. We had a big protest out there. What happened to her son? What happened to her son? He was murdered. He was murdered. He was murdered. By who? Um, assassinated. Uh, well, who? according to the text message that she received from her son, it was the people that was in employing him for the time, according to the text message. But I do want to read 1 John 3, 15, okay? 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. He know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So that's very important for Oblock and our people, Jason, because we have a tendency to hate one another, okay? Disrespect one another. We have an immense capacity to do that, but we never do it. I'll give you an example. Let me give you another example, Jason. You heard of UNICEF? Yeah, Jason. United Negro, yeah, college no, no, one, no. yeah. United, uh, Nash, uh, what is it? Damn, now I forgot. You said Negro. It ain't Negro. United a National of Children, something of children. In you look it up, UNICEF, U-N-I-C-E-F, UNICEF. Anyway, it's a Oh, group. the humanitarian organization. Originally called yes. the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. Yes. Now, people like myself and you, we travel, we try to help our people when they go through things. UNICEF comes in, their numbers are much larger, they have more money. And what happens? They end up adopting. There's articles on it, Jason. I'm not making it what I'm about to say. They adopt the children and rape our children, molest our children. 
And now the UN says, well, we're thinking about making pedophilia not a, a, a crime. They're just talking about it now. You can Google it, Jason. I'm not making it up. UNICEF. I know they, you're not they, making it up. Huh? Oh, you know I'm not making it I up? I know you're not making it up. Oh. I oh, know you're not. Thing. Okay, good, good, good. I thought you was going to come with something else. So, like, oh, here we no. Go. So listen, listen. This is why I don't understand the whole racial idolatry thing because there are many white evangelicals who are right there with you about this child sex trafficking, this pedophilia thing that's being instituted by these liberals or the progressives or the globalists that want to establish the one world government. This is all biblical. And, and I don't understand why, as a believer, you can't find common ground with people who know exactly what you're talking about, know exactly what's being done to children, know exactly why Planned Parenthood is being shoved down black women's throats, know exactly what's being done with the organs of, of aborted babies, and are fighting against it. And, and you know, it feels like you're caught up in the racial idolatry and can't see that there are people uh, that actually you would be allies with that know exactly what you're talking about. Jason, I understand that there are allies out there. And I appreciate the allies. Let them do what they do. But I'm going to help you all out with something. In Ecclesiasticus, you have to go to this one. Ecclesiasticus 12 and 10 and 11. This is what God, now I could go to the book of Ezra, but I like Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, verse 10 and 11 better. Read that kind of quickly for us. Sirach, Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy, but like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. So the Bible says never trust the same people that oppressed you. And slip. The Bible says don't trust them. Don't trust them. Though they humble themselves, Jason. Though they talk about reparation. Oh, we're going to give the Negroes some money. And then uh, they say, vote. And we're going to give you Negroes some money. I'm all off topic, Jason. I apologize. But these things pop into my head. California's talking about reparations. No, I know. Listen, I knew, I knew what I was getting into, out. Bishop Nathaniel, when I, when I got you. But you do know, about. Bishop Nathaniel, you're applying things to all people that may not be consistent with all people. All white mm. people did not enslave black people. Neither did mm. all black people over in Africa enslave all black people. And so uh, it, it's, it's we, we can't judge books and choose allies by the cover of their skin. We have to look a little deeper and what values do they have? What God do they worship? What principles, what biblical principles have they adopted? You're, I get it. It's very simple and it's, it reaches a mass audience when you, reach, when you reduce everything to a skin color. It makes it simple, easy for people to follow along, and it, it, it makes a retarded man think he's brilliant. But <laughs> there's, a, there's a deeper level of understanding of who your allies are, who, you're, who you can trust, and who your enemies are. And so I'm surprised I don't hear you talking more about Freemasons oh, and about uh, people, people of that ilk when you start wanting to talk about who the enemy is. Uh, there's a global elite that's been around for hundreds of years, thousands of years that have been practicing these Freemason principles that are wicked and evil. And, and that has a lot of impact of what's going on right now. But, but we've reduced everything down to a very simple-minded conversation like, oh, I can look at someone by the color of their skin and say they're evil. That's racist. That, that's the kind of mindset that was used against black people. I just don't think you cure oppression with a different form of oppression or a different form of racism. Mm, well, thank God I don't have any power as yet 
to do anything. I, I can't afford, I can't be racist. I can't even make a phone call and get somebody arrested. But certain people can get it, make a phone call. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Oh, Stop oh, that. Oh, it is Stop not that. Jason. Stop you that. Don't think, do, do Stop you think that. I don't have five stories to give you right now where people made phone calls, lies, and got us detained? Do you don't, I can't give you the rundown? You don't think I could do that? Let me give you, you can give me the rundown on what? Uh, that people have made phone calls, illegitimate lies, and got us detained by the police for their lies. Now that's with black on us. I mean, black, white on us. I meant to say white on black. But black people, we don't have that power to do that. Oh, he's hurting me. He's a black man. Please come get him. All of a sudden, I'm beat down. What the hell are you doing? Boop, boop. Shut up. Boop, boop. But I didn't do nothing. This is Nathaniel. Do, do you yes. remember you remember the two black strippers in Durham, North Carolina that accused the Duke lacrosse players of rape and those guys got charged with crimes and it was bogus and the, the black community there in Durham pressured the prosecutor to bring those charges and it was bogus. I call we we got to cut it out like we have no power to abuse. Yes, all people do. I'll say this. Can I get back to the scripture? I do, because I know we're going off topic, because <laughs> my, my mind is racing everywhere. I do want to read I'm Hosea 4. One. Come with me, Jason. Come with me. I'm this com is I'm, to I'm coming to join you, Elizabeth. Hold for one second. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Hosea 4 and 1. Watch. This is old, this is old block. Come Hosea on. chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. Read. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. This sums up many of our people in O Block, and not just O Block, I'm just, we're just talking about them for today's episode, but Throughout the world, Jason, Jamaica included, England included, our people are guilty of swearing, lying, killing, stealing, committing adultery, and blood touches blood. There, and you mentioned the two women, which goes back to um, Carly Russell, who lied about a baby being on the highway, which was a, what's that comedian's name? The dark skin short brother, what's his name? Kevin Hart made a Kevin joke. Hart. Three years yeah, he made a joke. He said, I'm driving down the highway and I saw a baby running on the highway. And I said, baby, what you doing on the highway? And the baby ran and I chased the baby. I said, baby, where you going? That whole Carly uh, Russell thing was based upon a Kevin Hart joke. And I'm ashamed. I'm embarrassed. Uh, but it's sisters like her and sisters like the ones you mentioned uh, with the, the, the lacrosse players who need to be reached to show them a better way. We don't have to lie. We don't have to steal. We don't have to manipulate the system. We need to conform our minds to the laws of God. Then and only then will there be hope for our people at all. We must be conformed to the word of God, keeping the commandments as the Israelites. Can I give you another one, Jason? Please. Uh, in, in, in the book of, uh, look at uh, uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10 down real quick. Just read it quick for me. I want to show you a gang problem, gangs in the Bible. Proverbs gang. what? Chapter 1 and verse 10. Yep. Proverbs gotcha. chapter 1 and verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk now down in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. So right there, the Bible's talk, that's a, 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 an initial understanding of how gangs operate. They all come together and have one purse. Okay, they all come together, they rob, they steal, they wait for people like you and I to come home from work and boop, stick them up, put your hands in the air, or whatever they say. 
<laughs> and they rob us. But the Bible is here to show our people a better way, another way. When you go to the New Testament, Jason, Ephesians 4, Christ spoke to the Apostle Paul about gang, deal, uh, gang members. In Ephesians 4, read that verse 23. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Jump down to 28. Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good. So you see that, Jason? God says to us, let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, work. Working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. So now it's, you got to, whether they call it pay it forward or whatever the, the expression is, you used to steal and rob people. Now you come into this truth as an Israelite keeping the commandments. Your purpose for working is not just to take care of you, yourself, but your brothers, your sisters that have need, the same needs that you have. And this is what we teach our brothers at O-Block, our sisters at O-Block. There is a better way, another way. And we need other men like yourself, Jason, to give us a hand. We like that. We love that. We'd appreciate that. There's so there, you you have a name you probably don't realize, Jason, greater than our name in this world, in this world. And you could do so much good for our people. Okay. And this is what this Tyler Perry's out there, the Denzel Washingtons. There's so much, but we have to be able to step out to them face to face, confront the evil confront the lies, confront their wickedness, their perversion, because many of us was involved in that, okay? This is what we got to do, and this is what going to Old Block was about, Jason. That's what it's always been about. What are you going to say, Jason? I know you got a lot to say. So I agree with you, and again, the reason I reached out is, again, two, three weeks ago when I saw this, I immediately reached out. Oh, they're doing stuff that I agree with and want to support and want to shine a light on and hope to inspire other men. My, my complaint is, is, again, the racial idolatry that I think gets in the way of you guys reaching your full potential and, and being more effective. And, and it's just the racial idolatry just violates my principles, my beliefs, and so it's a bit uncomfortable. But I got to just me being me, I don't have to agree with people all the way in order to support them. I, I, if, if anything that I see is good, I'm going to support. Y'all showing up and trying to point men a different direction rather than pointing guns at each other, pointing each other to the Bible, because if you stay in that Bible long enough, eventually you're going to discover the truth. And there, any man that's on a search for truth is eventually going to wind up in the Bible. And then I'm going to let the Bible, because there's nothing more powerful than the word of God. Not me, not you, not President Biden, not President Obama. People get in that word, eventually they're going to land in a better place and in a better spot. And so I, I do want to support you all. I, I, I do want to, I listen to some of the, the the scripture you reference, and I think in Hosea, you, it, those scriptures actually took me to a different place. It, it took me to a uh, come out from among them place. Revelation that, 18. That's, yeah, th th that's what I heard is, mm -hmm. I heard from Acts, to be honest with you, from the book of Acts, you know, come out from among them. And, and, and so I, I'm wondering, this leads me to a discussion about Pastor Dow and the straightway Israelites that you have a disagreement with, where they would say, uh, no, what we're doing is biblically sound. What we're doing is, uh, isn't filled with racial idolatry. It's a group of men leading a group of people out from amongst all the sin and muck and debauchery and we're starting our own communities out in the middle of, you know, rural areas. And we're cry trying to create a safe space for people that actually believe. And so I, I wanted your take on their philosophy of coming out from among them, whereas you guys seem to have a, no, we're going to cast our buckets right here. 
we're going to actually stay involved right here in the city and try to help the people, like the people in Chicago, like the people in Old Block. I, I find you're, you're both calling yourself Israelites, you share some similar beliefs, and then you depart in some other areas, but they are moving out into the hinterlands. You are making moves right in the inner cities where black people are and where people are affected. How, what do you think about their philosophy as opposed to you all's philosophy in terms of y'all just like, no, we're gonna draw a line and saying right here in the city where we are as opposed to them. No, we're gonna gather up our people and move out from among the craziness. <laughs> well, that's a very good question. When you go to the book of um, Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, I'm gonna show you the difference Romans 10, 14. Romans chapter 10 and verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So... That right there, jump up to verse one so we can get the context of who he's talking about. Verse one, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. In order to save our people, preachers must be, and the word preacher is just a modern word for prophet. They must be raised up and learn the biblical text and be sent to the people because our people have never heard they have a king. They have never heard there's a better way in keeping God's commandments. They've never heard that. They've heard you're a Gentile. They've heard Jesus is white. They've heard God is white and wait for that savior to come back. But no, 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 no. There's another way. The king looks like you. Keep the commandments. That's what they're hearing now. Now in terms of Pastor Dow. Yes, we do believe in that we are Israelites. We have that in common. Uh, he has a community he's establishing, and that's admirable. Uh, we have the same thing in Oklahoma. We have the same thing in Ghana. Uh, we're building one in Liberia. Um, Revelation 18.4. Uh, so those things are admirable. But you must be sent forth to the people face to face to talk to them. Watch this, Jason. This is the scripture you referenced, Revelation 18.4. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. Now, the, sin, the sins that's here, Jason, that our people are partakers in, is the religions that were set up during the time of chattel slavery, like Jehovah Witness, Baptist, Catholic, all of that was established when we were in chains. We got released, and they allowed us into those religions. Now we think that is the way. So not only that, Jason, but more sin is the politics of this, of this system. Every politician, you know and I know, they lie, they lie, they lie. They want the black vote and they lie. And once they get the black vote, we end up getting the short end of the stick. Like, what the hell is this? But we keep doing it every four years, every four years. Then we run to church on Sunday. God says, come out of her, my people. My people, come out that you do not be partakers of their sins. So again, I do want to say I do commend Pastor Dow on the communities. I could never knock that. That's that's admirable. I love that thing. But what we're doing, neither can they knock. Going out and gathering the lost sheep of Israel, okay, they can't, they can't, nobody can come against that. It's never been done before. Okay. Hey, Jason, did you know we many some of our brothers just came from India? In India, there's a group of slaves called the CDs that was taken there during the sub-Saharan slave trade. And they speak uh, the Indian dialect. Uh, they worship Vishnu, some of them are Christian, but their origin is our people taken from the continent of Africa. They've been lost. Most people never heard of them. Who's that? We go to them. We search them out. Where's our people at on this planet? The Zange that was taken to uh, Iran. The uh, Zange that was taken to Iraq. They call them Afro-Iranians, Afro-Iraqis in Turkey. 
There's clusters of our people up there. And I'm not talking about the migrants from Nigeria. I'm talking about back during the 1400s, 1500s. Nobody cares about our people, Jason. But the Lord has put it upon our spirit to go ye into all nations and teach the uh, gospel to our people. That's what we do, Jason. Have you seen, Jason, watch and read that we got, Jason? Have you seen watch and read? No. Jason, watch and read is for our children, where we have a cartoon system of animations that go through the Bible and show the images of our people that they've never, that I'm talking about little kids that they've never seen. It's called watch and read. If you get a chance, you can just, you know, Google it, check it out. And this is, we are, we, we, that's another thing that many of our sisters are involved in. People, what are the women doing? I don't see no women. The women, they're behind the scenes. They're doing a great work. Watch and read, preparing scripts for the children so that they can learn and become educated and know that they have a place in this world, a greater place in the world to come, in fact. You heard that, Jason? You're just looking at me. <laughs> Bishop Nathaniel, I, I want to... Thank you again for the time. This will be, not be the last time that we talk. Uh, I'm mad again, at you. I, I'm mad at you. No, never mad. Man, I'm, I'm standing with Jesus. I could never be mad at you. It, 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 <laughs> I'm only worried about him being mad at me. And, and so anyway, I, I, I do want to commend you all for what you're doing in Chicago. I, I think it's inspiring. I hope that other men are inspired by it. I hope that other ministers of all faith are inspired by it and feel pressure. Because that when I saw that, I feel pressure. Like, hey, that's what the Israelites are doing. As a Christian, how come we're not doing that? And, and so I, I commend you for the pressure you're putting on me and other men. I'm gonna continue to pray for you all, get some of that racial idolatry up out of y'all and get you on a little bit of a better path. But, but other than that, I got no complaints. And, and, and I'm gonna give you the last word. Why, why is it your group at this time that's out doing that work in O Block? Not to say that no Christian groups have, have ever done that, but I haven't seen us do that in the numbers. With, with as impressively as you all, particularly all men. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm, you know, for lack of a better description, I, I'm just a patriarch. I believe in male leadership. Why are you all having so much success with getting men to stand up as men, whereas perhaps some of the rest of us are struggling? Mm. Well, the one thing regarding our men, particularly the Israelite men, is that we've had no place in society. And us, we, they, our mothers took us to church. We saw images that did not reflect us. So we had no, nothing. So now that we've opened the Bible and young men are saying, hey, that describes me. That describes my son, my daughter, my wife. Okay. Or, or they'll say, they won't say wife, they'll say girlfriend. Now, as an individual, they're being fixed. When you read 1 Corinthians 11, and verse three, like the family structure at home, Jason. I just want to show you this. This is what men gravitate to. Number one is their own self-image in the Bible. The next thing is their family uh, standing. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse three. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ and that the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. That's another thing that's not been taught in black society. They have, the, the, I, I, I'm not going to go into it, but anyway, Jason, because I know it's a lack of time. But we've never, it's always been the woman over the man amongst our people. Now we're showing another way, to God's way. No, 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 brother, you're the leader of the house. She is, she was made for you. Okay, she was made as a support to you. They've never heard that. They've heard she's the head and the man is the follow behind her. And we get no respect in society. But now we're changing that, Jason. We're changing the mindset of our sons and our daughters. And God has anointed us to do so. That's the best that I can say. That God has anointed us to do that. And I give him all praise and all glory and all honor. Uh, Bishop Nathaniel, thank you so much. Uh, thank hopefully you. we'll talk again. Uh, we'll yes. play some tomorrow. 
And uh, we'll see you guys next week.